When Canada was born under the British North America Act in 1867, political power was divided in two parts, the provincial governments and the federal government. Section 91 of our Constitution lists the things that provincial politicians get to decide. Sorry, that's Section 92. Uh, things like schools and hospitals. Makes sense. And Section 91 of the Constitution says the federal politicians get to decide things of a national or international character, like currency and passports and foreign affairs and the military and national ports and pipelines that cross provincial or national borders. Makes sense. I mean, that's why you sometimes hear squawking, especially from provinces like Quebec, when the federal government tries to put its nose into provincial matters. And fair enough, I don't want distant and partisan politicians in Ottawa making local decisions for me in my neighborhood. But far more often you have local politicians who are just plain bored with having to deal with the small stuff. They dream of being national or even international political superstars without having to win those bigger elections. I mean, some people genuinely love talking about daily matters like garbage pickup or bus stops or bicycle licenses, but some local politicians get a bit of a Napoleon complex. They're short men who want everyone to think they're tall, so they do wacky things. You know what I'm talking about. It's like when a city declares itself to be a nuclear weapons free zone. Yeah, thanks for the showboating. Now, can you please get back to work picking up the garbage like you're supposed to do? I'm not putting down city politicians. I'm just saying that if you want to meddle in national or international affairs, run for parliament or join the diplomatic corps. Don't turn city councils into your little fiefdom. Go to a bar like everyone else does and bitch about world affairs there. I say all this because I think I've found Canada's most pompous blowhard mayor. And that's quite something given the likes of Calgary's Nahid Nenshi or Vancouver's Gregor Robertson. See, at least Toronto's Rob Ford loves talking about transit and garbage pickup. Well, check out this clip of Burnaby BC's own never-ending story, Mayor Derek Corrigan. Just bask in the awesomeness of this guy's conspiracy theories, worldviews, Chomskyite nonsense. This video went on for quite a while, but I just want to give you a few clips of it. Take a look. More and more, I'm beginning to feel like British Columbia is becoming a banana republic. Uh, over and over again, we see decisions being made by bodies who are not independent. So instead of moving goods down the Fraser River so that we can distribute them more efficiently, not taking that traffic through our cities, instead we're bringing dirty coal in shipping it by barge to Texada Island and then shipping it to China as if we're not all sharing the same air shed and that that dirty coal isn't going to blow right back into our atmosphere. It's, uh, it's insanity and, uh, and then they wonder why politicians have such difficulty in trusting the machinations of our senior orders of government, the ones that are given all the constitutional authority to be able to impose their will on local municipalities. It's incredibly frustrating. It's difficult and uh, it's hard for people to keep up with the, the way these multinational corporations are acting, their reputations, their performance, and uh, we can only depend on the press. I swear I cut out his lengthy rant about the World Bank and corruption in Africa. I mean, the guy ought to get his own TV talk show, don't you think? But mayor of Burnaby, what does any of that rant have to do with anything he's supposed to do? Well, one clue comes from Corrigan's pedigree. He's a hardcore left winger and a professional politician. His wife, Kathy Corrigan, is a professional politician too. She's an NDP politician and has been for five years. So the Corrigans, politics is their family business. And Kathy Corrigan, as an NDP candidate, ran in the last provincial election in B.C. a year and a half ago as part of the extremist no, no, no campaign, saying no to every and any industrial project in the province. No on mining, no on forestry, no fracking, no pipelines, no coal, no, no, no. Basically, no jobs, except for the NDP base, which is unionized government workers. Well, severely normal British Columbians said no to them, and the NDP lost. And so Kathy Corrigan like her mayor husband Derek, have basically had to shout their conspiracy theories into the wind ever since. But here's what's new. Derek Corrigan, the mayor who calls BC a banana republic, the husband of the NDP radical, Derek Corrigan has decided to do from his perch as Burnaby mayor what his wife couldn't do as an opposition NDP MLA. 
and what neither of them can do, given that they're not federal politicians. He has decided to unilaterally block a proposed pipeline route, the Kinder Morgan Trans Mountain Pipeline. That was actually the pipeline that cost the NDP the election. It was when the NDP leader, Adrian Dix, suddenly announced on Earth Day that he was against the expansion of that pipeline that the NDP started to nosedive. Well, it appears that the Corrigans want their revenge on that piece of metal that cost the NDP so dearly and cost Kathy her position in government. So without constitutional authority, without any constitutional authority, this blowhard mayor has decided to block the pipeline even though it constitutionally is the turf of the federal government. The feds decide things like pipelines and declaring war on other countries. Mayors, they take care of local matters like zoning for apartments and shopping malls, but not Derek Corrigan. He was going to stop that pipeline no matter what. See, the Trans Mountain Pipeline has been quietly and safely pumping oil through Burnaby for decades, before I was born. And now they're applying to the National Energy Board for the right to expand their pipeline along the existing route or right along their existing route. And the National Energy Board has permitted the pipeline to do some surveying to improve the route. But General Admiral Dictator for Life Napoleon Corrigan says he knows better. So he issued a stop work order from the city telling the pipeline company that it just can't do surveys just because. Here, the sun caught up with him yesterday. Take a look. Well, Kinder Morgan's uh, made an application to put a pipeline through the city of Burnaby to, uh, to move bitumen oil from Alberta to tankers that will ply the Burrard Inlet and the Georgia Strait. So there's been considerable opposition in my community uh, to that proposal and the city council has come out and opposed the Kinder Morgan project. Uh, Kinder Morgan has changed the route that they were going to utilize through our city on a number of occasions. I think this is the fourth route that they've proposed and the most recent one is one that goes through Burnaby Mountain Conservation Area, a park dedicated by our citizens through referendum and protected for its environment and ecological attributes. Boy, that's more fun than talking about how many parking spots a new mall has to put in, right? Tankers, oil sands. It's just like his wife's old NDP campaign last year. Take a look. Um, but that route change was as a result of a consultation, is it not? No. Is it uh, Kinder Morgan makes those route changes in accord with what Kinder Morgan wants to do? Uh, they always say it's about consultation, that they heard from someone that this might be a better place to go but uh, I haven't seen much of that consultation actually occur. And in fact, it certainly isn't as a result of consultation with the city of Burnaby. Well, actually that pipeline company, Kinder Morgan, has had literally dozens of community consultations, more than the mayor has on this issue. He's not in the pipeline business, but so what? He's the mayor, which in his mind makes him the king. Constitution be damned. Now, a few trees have, in fact, been cut down for the survey, and we know the NDP is against forestry, but there were literally 13 trees cut down. That's it. But Commander Corrigan thinks that's cause for the city to hire expensive lawyers to sue to stop the pipeline. We're talking about, at this point, 13 trees that were cut down. Um, is that enough damage to really get upset about this? Well, I guess uh, the issue is how many trees are enough damage in order to do it. Is This is just anticipating what will happen when Kinder Morgan actually begins the work on a pipeline. Mm -hmm. So we're saying no at the first stage because we know that it will be many more trees that fall as a result of the application being successful. Look, this isn't really about 13 trees. There will surely be more than 13 trees cut down for all the legal paperwork for Emperor Corrigan's lawsuit. But listen to him himself, the master conspiracy theorist. He admits this ain't about 13 trees. It's about his official foreign policy and energy policy. So the issues are the issues that surround this pipeline. It's dirty oil, bitumen, that's being exported for uh, China and for the United States. It's not about oil for British Columbia. It's not about oil for Canadians. And in fact, specifically, uh, Chevron applied to be able to get a consistent supply of oil to the refinery right here in Burnaby, and the National Energy Board denied them that.
So what we're talking about is not simply putting a pipeline through a community, it's putting in a number of super tankers and massive tanks that will store oil that will create a hazard for time immemorial as we will look over the next 50 years at problems that arise from those choices that are made. Kinder Morgan doesn't want to talk about that. They want to put on euphemisms that it's just twinning a pipeline. Now, maybe we should launch a trade war against China, like he suggests. That's odd for someone in the Vancouver region to say, with so much trade from there. Maybe we want a trade war against the United States, too, which he suggests, which would be even weirder. Maybe this blowhard is suddenly an expert in super tankers, but I don't think so, because actually the pipeline in question would not use super tankers. Super tankers don't go into the port of Vancouver. He just made that up. But even if he weren't, since when do mayors make foreign policy? Look, Derek Corrigan is bored. So is his wife. They both were certain she'd be an NDP cabinet minister by now. Instead, she's wasting away in opposition, and he's dealing with parking tickets. So they've created a little theater here, using city council chambers as a model United Nations to rant about the world. And now they're using taxpayers' money to launch doomed lawsuits that are sure to fail but sure to cost the city enormous funds. But hey, it's about politics. It's about revenge on the pipeline that cost Lady Corrigan's party the election. And it's about sticking it. What was the word he used? Oh yeah, sticking it to the banana republic of BC. Look, I may have my disagreements with BC's government, but the only banana republic commandante I see here, the only person running his office like a personal fiefdom is the buffoon from Burnaby, don't you think? More.